What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Sacred Sunday Show. I am Love Coach Scott Katamas, and welcome. Uh, I see a lot of our favorite people that are here with us, a lot of our beloved friends. There's Jeffrey and uh, Eleanor Joy, so I know we're going to have some good dancing. Get on your dancing shoes. Eleanor Joy and Jeffrey could lead the dance, because uh, Omar Shar is going to be with us in just a moment playing some music. Um, I am coming to you live from the Conscious Life Expo, and we've got several friends that have been invited, and they're going to pop up here and make it up here hopefully soon. Um, and we've got Jay Mayer, More Like Touch, and Wisdom Jewels. Do you remember the Wisdom Jewels? We've got Wisdom Jewels returning today. Now, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, and I want to acknowledge all the wonderful Facebook groups and pages that carry us. Thank you, John and Summer Ramu, for that. So if you're watching this on Facebook or on Alan Steinfeld's YouTube channel, that's cool. But come on into the Zoom room. In fact, I invite you, join the Global Peace Tribe. Now, I'm coming to you right now from the Conscious Life Expo. But right behind me, there we are. We are with the Global Peace Tribe. And we are an ever-growing group of people truly from all over the world. And I want to invite you to join us. And it's really easy to do that. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, click register for the new season. And when you do that, it's going to take you to our registration page. We do three or more shows every week, and they're all original. They all are bringing you incredible guests and information and music. I've met so many people here at the Expo that I can't wait to put on the show. So that's going to keep me busy this afternoon, uh, this afternoon, yeah, this afternoon, continuing to book them, but for throughout the spring. Um, and these are some of your amazing guests. Tangila is going to join us. Krista is going to join us a little bit later today. And this is an example of the shows that we do. On Wednesday night, we had a whole show on quantum manifestation, how to attract all the love that you want, all sorts of forms of love. And then, of course, I'm coming to you from the expo today and also last night. So also what happens is when you register, you're gonna get the links to all of our recordings um, so you can catch the shows you might have missed. So join the Global Peace Tribe. And thank you to all the people that are in our Zoom room already. So many beloveds that are here almost every show. We've really become quite a family. So come join the family. All right, one of the most wonderful parts of our family is Omashar. Uh, he's my co-pilot. He's here for every show, and he always gets us off to wonderful start with his music. 
Happy Sacred Sunday, Joe, my friend. <laughs> Happy Sacred Sunday from the uh, the pyramids of Colorado, and uh, <laughs> it's it's so wonderful to feel the energy beaming in from the Conscious Life Expo. You can you can feel it right now, and you know as we as we focus uh, our attention on you and what's happening there, I, I just feel enlivened. And so I have a, a song here which I'll start us off with called Completely Free. And um, it's completely free <coughs> because it is. All right. right. Uh, that, 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 that's that. And here we go. Whoa. Conscious Life Expo. <laughs> hey, Antoinette. <laughs> Look who's here. I actually know him. Just arriving on my screen as I'm playing is like, wow, far out. And Kimberly. So, there I am with two amazing women, Kimberly Meredith and Antoinette Hall. Um, and you get to see our hotel room. Um, <laughs> lovely. 
<laughs> what a wonderful song, Omashar. Thank you so much for so that. So beautiful. Yeah, and let me completely free, that. which we are. We are. We are. Yes. And thank you, Eleanor Joy and uh, Reverend Jeffrey. You know, Antoinette arrived just as I started. I put up Eleanor Joy, and then I got talking to them, and then I realized it was just Eleanor Joy dancing and Omashar playing music there for a little bit. So <clears throat> it was perfect. And as you can see, other friends are arriving. There's as always, it's Tangila. Tangila. <laughs> Namaste. You know, Antoinette. Of course. And Kimberly Meredith. Da -da -da. It's great to see everybody in person finally. Isn't this something? So, all right, well. Welcome. Uh, welcome and welcome to the awakening world you're live on with all of our guests awakening world i love this filter <laughs> i know i know we are all gorgeous so it's yes. the of the expo and we're all just resonating in each other's energy right Super high and you are gorgeous <laughs> the energy of the room of this hotel is on fire right now. It's so lit up right now. Yeah. Incredible. Now, I see another a couple of friends. This is my friend, Lumina, long time beloved. And then who's this lady here? Hi. Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Welcome. Hi, Awakening All. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is. Oh, we just had a almost our song. He was right? oh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, give us a few minutes. Yeah, make yourselves comfortable. And um, uh, I wanted to start with Kimberly. Um, because Kimberly Meredith, you've seen her on the show a few times. What's it like for you being as empathic as you are with thousands of people downstairs? And what's that for you? Thing. You know, I, I've been here for a few years now, and I've gotten more used to it. At first, when I first had my awakening, it was a little more difficult, you know, walking through the crowds, and I used to wear, like, a little beanie hat on to kind of keep myself more focused, but, you know, now, as the years have gone, I'm really used to it, um, yeah, so, but I love it, you know, because I'm a psychic medium, trans medium, I can see the spirit, the angels, the guides, all around people, so I really... And more grounded now, so I can get used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I love it. I love it. And then Antoinette is a virgin. Well, <laughs> yeah. at least as it relates to the Conscious Life Expo. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How was it for you first time here? Okay, so this is the weird thing. So Neil, we know Neil from like I saw an email from many years ago, um, uh, where Neil was asking that he was coming to one of Pato's birthday parties. Right. Many years ago. So we know Neil for many years ago, I guess probably through the Garantia movement, but I've never been to, I've always gotten the invitations, but this time we really wanted to come because I came here for healing purposes. Everything that was leading, you know, especially the last month, you know, ever since I started on, on this journey and this path during the whole year, but especially during the last month, I was like, all the videos and everything turned me right back over to here. Mm. You well, know. Now here's the amazing thing. You didn't know that Kimberly was going to be here. No. And she happens to be like the leading medical intuitive. I would love so to know. So let's you that. and I let's flip <laughs> okay. seats. Let's yeah, change seats. Yeah, because and, I've got some stuff to tell you. I was Do you mind her tuning into Antoinette? See, showing anything you might see? Are you comfortable with that? Sure. Yeah. Um, so you want me to do a reading or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is very spontaneous. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know we were doing that. We're open for everything. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I guess it's picking up something off of you intuitively. I'm going more like down into your abdomen there. Like, I don't know if you have any stomach issues down there, but they're kind of picking up on that. And then also, um, they're kind of talking about stomach and my guys are telling me something about um you want to take a couple breaths knees maybe you've had some kind of joint issues too i know you can say yes you know about that could have been in the past even uh but they are going also up into your, your mouth too like i don't know 
Those are there. Over here on the side of the jaw. Um, and they're also going, you can say yes or no, to me that said. And um, they're also talking about, once again, they're going around the belly, your stomach, indigestion, sort of. Maybe it's the food here. Uh, mm -hmm. But they are saying something, you say yes or no, if you know anything about that. They are saying in your joints, something about your joints, my guys are saying. Um, they are saying something about around the mouth again. I want to go up to the guys who are just saying mouth and maybe thyroid even. Um, it's a little close, so let me just look. I do my scanning like that. Um, did you ever have any hip issue, back issues? They are talking about that. Um, but they are talking about, once again, when I go across to you, um, this may be something you don't even know about, but they are going over around something with your leg and your circulation to the left side, going down the whole side of your left leg. I heard stuff about my left leg and um, the meridian and, uh, yeah. and the breast. Yeah, it's all on the left side. Um, do you want to back up a little bit? Because mm -hmm. you're kind of close to me to do a reading. Um, are you having a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they are saying they are saying something about your lungs, and they are going down again into your left quadrant, which is around your stomach area again and your spleen. And um, the guides are telling me something about. Do you want to give us anything? You want to tell me anything? Oh, um, well, I was diagnosed with breast cancer about yeah there's going over ago. to the breast mm -hmm. on the left side over and over again and then they're also kind of going left and right uh but they are going it's coming from the stomach mm -hmm. so do you want to go into that maybe gut issues you know because everything always stems from diseases stem from the gut issues liver um, I mean, cancer doesn't surprise me because the number coming up is linked to cancer that i keep getting mm -hmm. um but they're also telling me it came from the stomach, hmm. the cancer. Really? The root of it. Wow. Was there something you had trouble digesting? Not not by um, food, but like energetically. Also, they're telling me real quick that it also came from hormones, mm -hmm. a hormone imbalance. Yes. And that is coming from the uterus. And also, it stemmed from something of the circulation, why I keep going to the left side of the body. Mm -hmm. And then they're coming up to the mouth. So when your mouth by the guy that's going after your mouth so much. So this is a long conversation to do <laughs> right now in here, but they're also talking about fluoride and water and all that type of stuff. So when were you diagnosed with cancer? Um, 2021, November. Yeah, we so found the lump in July of 2021. But um, uh, fluoride, I don't do fluoride because I, I, I believe that blocks the pineal gland. So mm -hmm. We don't do the fluoride stuff at all. Yeah. The, um, definitely the left side. I mean, I've heard that before. People have told me definitely hormonal imbalance um, after the, the last test last year is 100% testosterone, no yeah. estrogen. Yeah. And what are they doing for it? What, are you doing what for I'm it? doing for it is I'm doing all natural alternative healings. So that's another reason why I'm here is because, you know, all the things that I started doing last year, which was um, um, uh, cannabis, mm -hmm. but we know it's 28 receptors in the body. Mm -hmm. It's like it is God's medicine. It is there to heal you, to help you. Um, diet change, um, lifestyle change, a lot of different things, just cleaning up, you know, a lot of different things. But what I was finding out was the spiritual connection was the missing part. I think of all the other stuff was like, as far as the protocol was going, like eat this, don't eat that, drink this, drink that, take this morning, noon, night and whatever. But finding the root cause, it wasn't until more recently that, um, that led me here right. and into the spiritual connection, into the meditations, into the prayer, into finding what was happening inside. And that's why I brought my healers with me too, my to the extra. My question is to you mm -hmm. uh, that, are you hundred percent healed? Well, I'm saying that I am, but, you know, until uh, 
because that's what I have to do in order to heal myself. You know, if I'm going to sit there and think that I'm not healed, I don't believe that I will. So I will I'm, always be fighting. Yeah, I'm an intuitive medium healer. I'm out of Tennessee. Now, you're more than welcome to come over there if you like or where you live. I live in Lake Elsinore. Okay, not too far. Yeah. Um, my guides are saying there's probably other things that you can do that mm -hmm. might be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how long, you know, we have here on camera, but... Um, you're more than likely, you know, if you want to come visit me, there's a lot more things that my guys would tell you. There's a lot of other people involved in this on the other side that have crossed over mm -hmm. um, that are involved in the situation too. But there's a hundred percent more things going on that would be helpful for you to do. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things that go on with breast cancers and other types of cancers are not just emotional they're environmental mm -hmm. and so that's why the guides are saying in my book called awakening to the fifth dimension discovering your soul's path of healing um we go into talk about not only food and supplements but environmental pollution that's why when i'm looking through your body right now they're going around your teeth the gums mm -hmm. the guides all the guides that come into me they're saying your thyroid mm -hmm. your lungs your abdomen um the circulation and going to like all all along that they're also talking to somebody on the other side that's crossed over that's that's passed away that's coming in and wanting to communicate and be with you through this journey they're with you they're like a soulmate they're connected to you they're with you like seven days a week and they want to be there to comfort you and guide you and with the journey of the healing um so they're they're with you right now <laughs> also um, this is a person that's um, a woman, um, sort of like a, a motherly woman, a, a grandmother type feeling uh, that's with you to help you, that's with you, um, guiding you on your healing path. Um, so anyway, I'm here for you if you want to ever come visit me, um, and we can get further into that. Thank you. Who wants to be with you and guide you on that stuff? Mm -hmm. And now when I talk about water... I'm talking about um, certain types of water. And this is like an hour conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also foods and different types of things like that. Mm -hmm. And still keeping the same team that you're working with, the guys are telling me, as you can see, I'm blinking, they can't see it. Mm -hmm. But they're saying, keeping your team, and then we add with my team mm -hmm. and how to make this like really cool plan. My team is awesome. A lot of them are here today. <laughs> yeah. I so we're just having really this beautiful conversation. This spontaneous brief one. I've got so many mm -hmm. guests I got to introduce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but Kimberly Meredith, as you can see, is amazing. Um, she's an Encino. She's also written a wonderful, wonderful book. And I will, when I'm able to access my computer, I will show you both. And you will yeah. And we're also healers. So we're giving you healing right now, too. Mm -hmm. thank, so you. thank you. And thank I you. want to invite the whole, um, I'm going to go to gallery view for a minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite our friends. Let's all send maximum grace to our beloved friend Antoinette because we love Antoinette. We love this woman. So, going to go to gallery view. Everybody give her maximum grace. I'll go back to speaker view. There we go. There we go. So, maximum grace for Antoinette. Thank you. Maximum Absolutely. grace for Antoinette. And we're all going to be with Antoinette. Those of you who come down for the Global Peace Tribe Retreat. We're going to start it off, you know, on Tuesday is the big event that Ben Bowler's put together with Pato and Antoinette and um, Christian Hoffman. That's on Tuesday, March 28th. On Wednesday, we're going to go visit Pato and Antoinette's land. And then the Global Peace Tribe Retreat starts on Thursday. Kimberly's going to come to that sometime over the weekend. We're going to have Sri and Kira. It's going to be very special. So we want you to be in radiant health when we go to your land. I, I'm telling you, it's healing. It's healing land. That's one of the things that I found out was like, Every day that I go out hiking onto the land, I don't have any issues, symptoms, or other things. It is yeah. it is yeah. so full of life. We were out Beautiful. there shooting yesterday. I cannot wait to show you guys. You guys will just feel so alive and feel so energetic. It's it's just amazing. And Absolutely. when they bless, when Sri and Kira come and bless the land, I, I have a video. So I'm going to send you the video because I'll awesome. probably figure out like where they want to actually do the blessing. Can you guys hike? Can you guys get up to the mountaintop or are we going to have to yeah. do it someplace where it's in a dimension, it's a high dimensional yes. frequency where you're calling in that um, 
probably sacred divine feminine Mary, like yes. I for the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. And then you can be healed, you know, mm -hmm. it's easy. And I will be with Antoinette at her concert on Thursday. Uh, no, Friday night. Friday, Friday night, night, the 17th. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be at a concert for anybody in Southern California. You should come because it's uh, not too far. I'm in Ronridge Park in Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. So I need to bring up my next two guests. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you <laughs> both so much. Mm -hmm. Hang out, stay mm -hmm. chill. Um, I'm going to be here for the day, so we're right. simply going to be. I will yeah. see you later. Thank you. Yes. And Karen, I'd love for you to meet Luna now. And I'm going to go down to Aunt Sheila and Krista. Let's get the healing with Twin Ray. Okay, yeah, okay. Oh, yes. And then I'll... Here comes Aunt Sheila and Krista. Go ahead and have a seat. In the middle or here? Right over here. Thank Please you. Squeeze everybody in. We'll have to tie, tie the clothes. It's soul search time. <laughs> Hold on, soul search. You know. And so, of course, Tangila is the founder of Soul Search. I met Krista through Soul Search, and you two are like two of my favorite co-hosts. I you. love co-hosts, yeah. both of you. Oh. Okay, now what's it like <laughs> being at the Expo? What are some highlights for both of you? Oh my goodness, the Expo has been amazing. We have, you know, we have a great booth downstairs. So, um, yeah. so we've been just meeting with so many people throughout the Expo. Um, exhibitors, the speakers, everyone coming in. If there are already members of Soul Search, they're coming and connecting with us, um, chatting, doing interviews. Um, and we have so many new community members joining, just saying they're so excited about connecting because, you know, we have a lot of people coming down from a small town. I don't have other people who are, I'm going through this awakening process. I don't have anyone to connect with. So I'm so excited to have, you know, this place to be connecting and finding community, spiritual community. So it's been so fun. And um, yeah, just to, I moderated um, the Twin Flame, uh, the Soulmate panel. The oh, oh there was called the Twin Flame. Oh, oh, right. Soulmate panel yesterday with um, the Twin Ray, um, Queen, Queen of Alaska, Alaska. Oh, I love her. Gail Thackeray, Salima Adelstein, and um, uh, Karen Reese, the celebrity oh. medium. And that was amazing. It was very profound. And that's amazing to, to moderate with all yes. those people. Yes, it was profound. Um, incredible connections just around soulmates, twin flames, like finding self-love, you know, finding self-love first and foremost, you know, connecting to the divine, the love, lover, and beloved. And, and then also people were able to ask their own personal questions about finding their soulmate and finding their twin flame. And now what's what's one thing that stood out for you? Like, is that, I know a lot of people are always wondering about that. So what's your- Well, I think, um, you know, one of the things I think that all of the speakers spoke about is that our society is like so focused on finding the one, you mm -hmm. know, finding the one in terms of a romantic love, mm -hmm. you know, but the one is our beloved, the divine. and. And, you know, the focus is when we focus on connecting with, with the one, which is our divine source, energy creator, God, goddess, the universe, first and foremost through ourselves, then we open ourselves up to our connection with a romantic partner and with our soul family. There it is. That is, is such an important teaching, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The eternal beloved is what we call Exactly, it. the eternal beloved. And so each one of us, you know, when we remember that we are the lover, you know, and we are connected with our beloved, we are the love, lover, and the beloved. And this, you know, having that constant connection and remembrance of ourselves as the divine and our own connection to the divine and opens ourselves up to all forms of connection, you know, the divine. So it was a really profound panel. <laughs> Crystal, so beautiful. What has stood out for you? Tell us about your experience here. Wow. Crystal. So it's my first experience at I am. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I've known about it for several years, but obviously, you know, I just, I, I wasn't living near here in the past. So I just had to, you know, it was travel. So this was really convenient. It was just really in my path. And I also find it this year that so many of the people that I've met in the past two years during the pandemic, whether it's through soul search or other um, communities um, that, you know, we aren't alone and here we are all together. Mm -hmm. So you know, and I think that's so beautiful to experience and just to see everyone, you know, shining in their own light and, you know, stepping into, you know, their divine gifts and their purpose and everyone supporting each other is so beautiful too. Um, 
I know that you have been helping people learn about Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've been actually representing this incredible high conscious healing technology during this event. So um, it's amazing just also to see how, you know, science and consciousness are really blending now and, and allowing us to bring these healing technologies to the world and to support people in healing. And we know um, actually that this product actually allows us to connect into the pineal. When you put this on your body, it sends a signal to the pineal, to the pineal which opens up to the divine mm -hmm. and the five, fifth dimensional healing. So yes, we are our own healers. We know that we have the power to heal ourselves. Um, and even Kimberly, I know in her class, was talking the other day and in her um, book, Awakening to the Fifth Dimension, she talks about healing from the fifth dimension. You can't heal from the third dimension. Mm. But when we are in that place and we choose the fifth dimension or higher, that's where we hold the vibration of healing and divine perfection. So this product is really allowing us to connect with that and hold that healing frequency because sometimes people, oh, I'm better. And then they get worse again. Well, because we're still kind of going in and out of Absolutely. that vibration. So this is a supporting product that allows us to continue to hold that vibration and heal from, you know, the divine. Beautiful. And a, a lot of our global peace travelers are using it. It's X39. It comes from a company called LifeWave. You can't order it online. You find someone like Krista or one of our many people in Global Peace Tribe or myself who can show you how to get these. But it, I'm using, I've got it. You can't see because it's on the back of my neck. Krista, yeah, you can wear it on C6. They're actually uh, clinically tested to be worn on acupressure points. So, so I would say the other thing too is again, like Tanjila said, so many people coming together and realizing how many people haven't been to an event like this or don't have community yet. So I'm just so lit up seeing that the community is coming together and supporting those that are newer on their awakening journey as well. It's absolutely beautiful. And just, just, it's lifting my spirits. I mean, I'm feeling light and higher and I find it easy to get into my meditative states when I'm in my room at night. And it's just like being in the vibration of this is just I, I'm excited to see what's going to appear this week in my life, too, just because I know this really yeah, lifted my spirit. so lifted. Exactly. Absolutely. May this vibe come off to all of you. Yeah, wow. sending it. We're sending this incredible, you know, we're blessed. We got to come together geographically, but we're sending this out to our beloved global peace tribe. Exactly. And I think that's what's just been so amazing about this event. And, um, you know, my beloved Charlie and I also did a talk in activation yesterday where, you know, we worked with um, everyone in the room to really like, you know, bring in these energies, these cosmic energies and connect to the divine. And then really together bring all of this energy of healing and unconditional love, compassion, harmony out to Turkey and mm -hmm. Syria, where they're, you know, having these- 33,000 people. Exactly. That's a small city. Exactly. So it's just like, you know, to Turkey and Syria, to, you know, the war-torn areas of the Ukraine, to the slums and the homeless areas and encampments here in LA and around the world, to the mental institutions, to the prisons, you know, like there is, there are all of these areas of despair, suffering, grief, angst around the world. And, you know, when we are coming together as this high vibrational, high frequency community with open hearts and full love and compassion, we are able to then harness all of this love and energy we bring together and to bring it to each of these people around the world. And they may not even understand or know what is happening around them, but suddenly mm -hmm. there is a wave of upliftment and love that is shifting, you know, that is shifting. And we are probably able to do that and create that together in every moment. So, yeah, you know, and I just want to connect with all of our beautiful Global Peace Tribe, you know, community and team here with us tuning in today through Facebook live here on Zoom and catching the replay and just taking a minute all of us to like you know connect hearts open heart to heart soul to soul just remembering the beautiful divine beings that each one of us are connected in cosmic unity connecting to divine source energy above connecting to mother Gaia below and feeling this golden bright light of our cosmic beings reverberating across the universe. Feel this light together, all of us, reverberating unconditional love, peace, harmony, and beauty to our brothers and sisters in Turkey. 
Syria, Ukraine, all of the hospitals, prisons, mental institutions, homeless encampments, all over the world feel the depths of despair and grief and angst. And let's share our love and compassion and commitment to one another in unconditional love and unity. Let's open our hearts, embracing each one of our brothers and sisters, human, animal, plant, mineral, cosmic, galactic, embracing this infinite oneness of who we all are, knowing that together we are uplifting the vibration of this planet and bringing joy to each one around the world. Send our love, send our peace, send our blessings together. Um, what a beautiful wow, prayer. Thank you. And she's amazing, and God has blessed her. Did you see that good looking guy in the back? <laughs> Come on over, Charlie. <laughs> if you've been seeing this good looking guy kind of in the background, <laughs> That's Charlie, and that's her beloved. So come on in, Charlie. You can take my seat. Um, um, oh. One comment, and then I can. I think I just want to also acknowledge, like after that, Punji I mean, that just is an example of how, when we come together, like how how in our hearts we are. So what a beautiful prayer for all of humanity. So exactly. thank you and your example. And I just wanted to acknowledge, you know, what you have done and what Scott has done to bring community together. And I mean, it's really soul search this past year that really allowed me to step into my life. Yes, how I you and then that's me up to, you know, the relationship mm -hmm. I've had with Scott and this beautiful tribe. So I'm just so grateful for all of us. And I'm excited to announce sometime soon to some of the things that I'm bringing around community. Well, okay. Well, um, Humanami is the name of a company that I started about three years ago, but it's really been lying dormant through the pandemic. And it really was started when I became a certified epigenetic health coach, mm. where I wanted to bring epigenetic coaching to the masses, mm. you know, and allow it to be scaled so that everyone can access it. And, um, and so when we were doing that, I realized that there was just a lot of moving parts and you know pieces to that because it's not just aligning with our unique DNA blueprint through the physical DNA and the health part of the DNA, but it's also clearing the lineage, clearing the things that are in the DNA that are holding us in patterns and trauma and behaviors and things like that. So that platform is really now speaking to me to bring it to life. And it starts with my own coach team, but there's so many other facets of it where we want to create a community around um, healing from healing from the inside out and from um, aligning with our unique DNA blueprint so we can be limitless in health, wealth, and love. Beautiful. So human on me actually means human, which is, of course, us, our beingness, right? And then anami, the Sanskrit word that means the ever-evolving plane or the higher levels. Mm. So this is about the higher level human. Wonderful. So stay tuned in 2023. It's really going to be launched. And now I can't even <laughs> access my computer. Right now. But I also what I will do is at the end of the show, I'm going to take people to everybody's websites. I'll take people to the Soul Search. But remember, right now you can find all these people at Soul Search. Exactly. Just go to soulsearch.io. Soulsearch.io. You can find Krista, you can find Charlie. And in a moment, we're going to bring up Joan of Angels. Who's also one of our amazing most amazing people. So has Krista so much as such a beautiful example of someone really you know, answering the call, you know, yeah. knowing that you have these divine gifts. And it's such a beautiful example because all of us have these divine gifts, these supernatural abilities. Our divine connection is infinite. And each one of us has the ability to channel the divine to, you know, to tap into our telepathic abilities or psychic abilities and really help hum humanity in whatever way we are meant to. And so Krista, following her soul's calling. And I'm so excited that she was just been part of our soul search platform, mm -hmm. bringing forth her gifts as a psychic, a medium, an epigenetic health coach, and helping to educate our whole community 
about DNA and activating all of these higher strands of DNA. So right. congratulations, Yay. Princess. Thank you for sharing your gifts with Thank the you. world. We're so Thank lucky you, to have you. Yeah. Now, before Krista leaves, one thing I want to say too that's interesting for everybody to recognize, both Krista and Tangila, it's not like they've been doing this their whole lives. I mean, on one level, we all have, right? <laughs> But, you know, Crystal left the shoes in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. Tangila was working with the military in, in, in Saudi, in uh, <laughs> Afghanistan, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, so at any age, there can be an awakening. And usually the awakening comes with a health crisis or a big shift in reality. Like we have an existential crisis, our marriage ends, our, we get, have a health crisis. But then we come through that chrysalis and we literally go from being the caterpillar to the butterfly. And so, you know, we look at Tangela and Krista and they're so radiant and amazing, but they've gone through quite a journey to get here. And I'm saying that because I want to acknowledge any of you watching, no matter what age you're at, you can still have this opportunity because that's what's happening now. We're all awakening and we're all on our own pace and we're all in our own unique journey. We all are awakening. We are the microcosm. You know, we, and add, as I was with the Twin Ray a lot this weekend, and they were reminding me that our cellular structure is a, an exact um, to the stars. You know, we have about the same number of cells as there are stars. And as within, so without. And the point is we're all awakening mm -hmm. as individuals. And so Krista and Charlie, and Tangela are wonderful examples. And you look at them, they're gorgeous, they're beautiful, they're radiant. But they went through a lot to get to this place. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. Well, thank you, Scott, for acknowledging. And yes, and we're all awakening and rising together in community. And that's what's so beautiful, too, is that you know we don't have to do this alone. And we're not doing it alone. We're actually so connected and we're supporting each other in every way possible. And also we're supporting our whole soul family around the world as we are awakening together. And as humanity is awakening, um, we're all here for one another and just growing this tribe together is so beautiful and exciting. Will you be willing to let Joan of Angels keep your... Um, <laughs> all right, so Charlie, go sit next to you, beloved. We'll bring up Joan of Angels. Love you. Love you. Here she yeah. is, another wonderful... Here we go, our Oracle of Ancient I've Wisdom. Beautiful oh. angel in dream life. Yes. I have seen lots yes. of pictures of you. I've heard your voice and panels. And we even have Jasmine Bear. Oh, it's like meeting everybody. Pretty cute. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Well, Joan of Angels needs no introduction here. She is one of our favorite soul searchers, although we have so many, but yeah, you know, we have a special place. She is an oracle of ancient wisdom. She channels the angelic and higher realms. She can fluff your wings to help you remember the angelic being that you are. And she's also a visionary spiritual artist. And she has a beautiful offering now where she actually paints and creates your, um, an artist rendition of your higher self. Uh, so that you can be, you know, really connected to that higher self of who you are. And that's really what Joan is all about, helping you to remember who you are truly. Right, Joan? I, I love hearing myself through her eyes. I came in this life, guys, I'm sending you so much love. I'm so honored to be here, you know, to remember who you are this life, to be able to embrace it 1,001%. To know without a doubt that you came here in service to some way uplift this planet. Because all of us here listening, if you're in this tribe, you're a volunteer here. You came down here with such a soul mission. And planet Earth, I think, is one of the hardest. I think this is the graduate, graduate, postgraduate degree planet in terms of difficulties and challenges and navigating and just raising your frequency then is an art form right mm -hmm. so i'm just happy exactly. to be here guys and and i love that that my job here is to help as as kenji says to puff your wings but to help you remember mm -hmm. the, your assignment literally you know like what you what you came here those gifts that are within your heart that you that allow you to shine all Tangela and i and charlie do is we 
shine with the gifts we have and we go with those instead of the ones society told us to, to do. And coming out as an angel, coming out as a high spiritual being takes is an art form. It, it's like embracing your, your body, mind, and spirit to align it. And that is the miracle. That is the bliss, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we're connect that having that alignment and that divine connection is what it's all about. And we just forget. We just forget it. It's designed for us to forget. I mean, they didn't come down here and they say, oh, you're welcome, planet Earth. Here you are. These are the rules here. This is what, what you could expect. And we've assigned you to a more difficult family just so you could learn those lessons. Don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Because you had the roughest childhood. Do not take it personally because we all had assignments and some of us had that because we needed to get tough. We actually needed to one day embrace who we really are. Yeah. So remember that it, it, it's not where you came from. That that was what molded you into who you are and to shine your brilliance for about just like your beautiful third eye adornment. We're here to just shine our brilliance, guys. I've watched, I love these two. I've watched them over the last few months falling in love, shining each other's but I should probably shouldn't say that. But, but shining each other's light and asking each other to step into their highest, highest self. It's like, no, I don't want to be in a relationship with that one, just leading with the worst. Let's lead with the best, you know. And I think these times call for us to do what we came here to do. This is a time to shine and lead with our best self. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we're gonna stay here. I'm gonna do what, but we've got Zinka, who's only got five minutes. So stay right here. Okay. Zinka, come on up. I just met Zinka. This is Zinka. She's here and she's the high five party. Okay. Other amazing soul searcher, Zinka. Hey. Zinka can only be here for five minutes. We're going to do an entire show with Zinka, an entire Wickening World on March 1st. But Zinka, tell us about what you're doing. Yes, we are up to another crazy experiment at LightNet. Um, and we're doing a mini harmonic convergence. Mm -hmm. So this is an idea that's, that Altair had. He's like, well, you're doing co contact teams of 8 to 12. Why don't we do 100 at a time and see what happens? And I said, okay. <laughs> so he lives on an island in Japan. Um, he's got one of the most unusual brains on the entire planet. It's permanently on human resonance. It's in resonance with the environment that we live in, the earth itself. And he's also, you know, he's been awakened since he was two years old. He studied every single religion on the planet. He's the kindest, most like loving guy. He's very humble, but he can call events and objects into reality. Call dolphins to the shore, ships that 30 people see. Um, upwards, things like that. And he's, he believes that we can all do that. And he wants to show you techniques, how to calm your nervous system down, how to open yourself up, how to expand your, your understanding of what's possible in your life. So we look forward to you joining this. It's contact100.org. Uh, it's two weekends. So we're going to meet in the middle of the night, just kind of shake things up in your life. And so that you can really be present for it. So it starts at 10 o'clock at night, ends at one in the morning here on the West Coast. Um, it's Friday and Saturday night. And then the next weekend, we're gonna integrate. We're gonna keep you guys as a family. You're gonna be on the new beta platform at LightNet. So you guys are gonna get to know everybody. And you're gonna get your entire Vedic astrology chart. Not only is this gonna guide you in your life, <laughs> Uh, it's going to guide you in this contact experience. So. And, and I'm going to be participating in that. So I'm going to be literally one of the 100. Um, Omushar, because I can't access my thing, could you put in contact100.org? Contact100.org is where this is going to happen. We can get the information. And what's the weekend again? March 3rd and 4th. So in about 20 days or 19 days, um, we're going to do this experiment. It's going to be amazing. So as we know, you know, it's a lot easier to cause bold realities when you do it in intentions of more than eight. That's Lynn Taggart's research. You can do miracle healing, which is mind blowing. Imagine what is mm -hmm. possible when we're synchronized with a hundred people spread it. You've got people from Ireland signed up. You've got people from Canada, all around the world. 
we're coming together in love to open our hearts, open our mi minds as wide as they go and love and support each other through the process. So. <laughs> and we'll have a whole Awakening World show on March 1st with Zenka. Just a couple of days, but you better sign up because the 100 is a 100 person limit yeah. and it will get filled. So I want to do this for a lot of my global prescribers. No. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Zinka, I know you've got another yeah, interview, yeah, yeah. Thank but you so thank much, you for guys. jumping up. <laughs> so just so you know, you, as soon as it'll be a thousand, then ten thousand, fifty thousand, the power of that, and I want to hold that that we see that happening. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of this expansion, more and more mm -hmm. contact each and every person, and that's really the model of Lightnet and Altair. He said, "You a hundred are going to teach." the next 10, the next 100. So it's this is the idea. So come as a learner, as a teacher, as a leader. Um, so you you'll know that. if you want one these 100, you'll know. And this is the first first group that gets to do it. He's been doing this. Again, it, it, you know, his brain is studied by people all over the world. He broke five news headsets, you know what I mean? Because his frequency is so high. Mm. But he, he can really walk us through this. So yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah so. Thank you so much. Check it out. Beautiful. In terms of today, we still have Isaac Mars here. Isaac Mars is here. Yeah. So, so, I just want to tell people what I'm up to. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Then, I can, then I can open up this space for more and more people. Absolutely. Let me just tell the audience what's now. So we're going to hear from Joan, then we're going to hear from Charlie, and we're going to hear from Azil, and we're going to hear from Isaac Mars, and we're going to close out with light touch. So just want to let everybody know what's going on. Take your waves down. Oh my God, guys, listen, this is the 21st year of the Conscious Life Expo, and it is now the largest of its kind in the country. And you can just feel, I mean, I feel like we're just part of this cosmic ray that's mm -hmm. expanding, and we're bringing that to you guys. So I have a lot of things going on. I'm working with my darling friend, Tangela. We're going to bring out an art program for visionary artists and help you guys kind of connect to what it's like to be a visionary and take that from here and from source on through Canvas. But I have another new offering that I actually haven't even told you about. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Joan of Angels Power Hour. Wow. And I'm going to do it every Sunday. So go to my website, joanofangels.com. It's not, and my new website just launched yesterday. Congratulations. Okay, so it went from being, just went, it's gorgeous now. So if you haven't been to it, just go and sign up because next week I'll send out an email about Joan of Angels. Power hour, is that like, because we're going to fluff your wings, just like mm -hmm. Tangi was said. Like. Before or after the show, since it's on Sundays, so we're here from <laughs> 10 to 12. Yes, I've already organized that. Okay, I, I know your schedule. <laughs> I was already told. <laughs> but, but yeah. How, we could lead right into you, or you lead into I'm going to lead into him. him. Perfect. I believe the Lord for Scott. And guys, I've known Scott for many, many years. It's oh, our first time. Years. It's amazing that we haven't been on air together. We met years ago with some other programs, and I just thought he was the most incredible being. So to be on the show is great. Oh, it's great. So, By the way, have you on the show? It is. And, you know, and it's so funny because my friend Lumina, who we knew, oh, Lynn is a longtime friend of mine. I haven't seen her in years. She's here at the Expo staying in my room, actually. And then she and Joan, it's all. It's, a compl it, it's almost like a circle that kind of got broken, like not broken, but people, you know, like, you know, separate tracks. And suddenly we're all together. The only person not here is your dog. But we have. Oh, yes, yes. 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 But I was feeling like that energy of completion. So the other thing, so exciting. I introduced speakers here at the expo. Every one of them has been an angel. Mm. And um, and they keep looking at me going like, are you the mother angel? Oh, are you wow. the father of all angels? Oh, I, wow. I don't know. What do you think, Charlie? Could be. Yeah. <laughs> Joan of Angels. So again, what's the website one more time? Joanofangels.com. There you go. Joanofangels.com. Yeah. Azil, come on, join uh, us. I love Azil. Yeah, yeah. you, you see Azil on my YouTube channel in a couple of weeks. Do a show. Yes. I do the show with Alan. So, Azil, I'm going to let you sit here. Oh, yes. thank you, Joe. Exactly. I can't see the big hug, but you. <laughs> 
And I am so excited to be introducing Athiel Tufsal to our beautiful Awakening World community around the world. Welcome, Athiel. Hi. Athiel is an amazing and powerful channel. Uh, he channels the Elohim and he brings through extremely high frequency, powerful transmission, uh, really helping us to elevate our understanding of who we are as divine humans. And I've had the honor and the privilege of uh, working with Asil. I attended an incredible retreat that he and the Stargate experience did together in Mount Shasta. And Asil also goes around the world clearing energy in a lot of different locations. And you can actually follow him because he has an amazing team that also helps capture um, the work that he's doing as he's doing this grid work around the planet. So welcome, Asil. I'd love for you to just introduce yourself to everyone. Thank you, and Zila. That was pretty good. Uh, wow. Like, not bad. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> uh, yeah, so our work is, like my work is, is two-part. And, and one part is really transformation, the awakening of humanity or human consciousness, the evolution of human consciousness. As we are going through this phase where the energies on this earth uh, are rising, more and more people are going to awaken. It's going to be this massive wave of millions, hundreds of millions of people waking up like at the same time. Mm -hmm. And just imagine what that's going to do to someone who has been like in the matrix their entire life. They don't have the concepts that we have mm -hmm. or the tools that we have, which means they're going to need support. They're going to need all of you to be there for them to say, hey, it's okay. This is just a spiritual awakening you're going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is a little crazy and maybe a little destabilizing and overwhelming. But if we can bring all our practices to all of those people that are awakening, then we can hold that space. We're going to be the, the doulas in that sense, like mm -hmm. the spiritual doulas of humanity's awakening. So in that sense, that's one piece that's really important, supporting humanity as they're awakening. The other piece, is the energetic grid of the earth this is also a piece it's like you know the acupuncture lines of the earth mm -hmm. that are holding the energetic space for the earth if energy doesn't run properly across these lines what happens the energy is stagnant stagnant energy festers and turns into something darker mm -hmm. heavier right and some of the places um, I was um, being sent to to do this sacred earth work is, you know, countries that are on the brink of war or in war. So I go into war zones. Uh, countries, they have had war throughout many periods of human history mm -hmm. where residue of that war is still in the fabric of their field. Mm -hmm. So there is sites of global trauma places where genocide happens, mm -hmm. concentration camps, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. But I also go to nice places. Mm -hmm. So not just those like really heavy energies. Um, we also go to like uh, the places that we are recognizing as vortices, mm -hmm. right? The interesting thing about my work is I would, as a human being, as a civilian, mm -hmm. I would normally not go to, let's say, a place that is still in like war or post-war, mm -hmm. right? Like a place like Iraq or... Mm -hmm. Um, a place like, um, you know, Syria. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get to these countries and it is highly recommended not to go sure. for a civilian. Mm -hmm. But because I have this guidance, I'm like, okay, well, I trust the guidance. Mm -hmm. right. I trust that I'll be fine. Sure. And what's interesting, the moment I share this with some individuals that this is the place I need to go to, people pop up with like, oh, I have this guide for you. I have this person mm. for you. And we find the perfect right mix of people wow. to be able to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Go to some of the most sacred places mm. that are in these, in these areas or the places that are disturbed where the locals even say, no one lives in that town anymore for 300 years because it's a cursed town. Mm. Can you do something about it? Mm -hmm. So I'll go to that place and do some clearings. And, and then... We move on and hoping and knowing that the energy now starts to move and the region starts to shift as the energies are moving. Now, this is a global effort. 
mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So in our work, we have to also train more people to become sacred earth light keepers, sure. right? Individuals that can go to these places and hold the light mm-hmm. and do the clearings just mm-hmm. the way I've been doing them. Yeah. But, you know, a country can have hundreds of sacred sites or uh, sites of global trauma, mm-hmm. right? right? So now imagine times, you know, 150, 200 countries. Yes. That's a lot of sites to go to, including places like Antarctica and so on. Mm-hmm. And in our work, there's, there's two pathways. There's pillars of light as an individual becoming a pillar mm-hmm. of light. Mm-hmm. And the second path is as an individual becoming a sacred earth light keeper. Mm-hmm. And these are complementary paths. Right. And we believe that um, human beings that are on this path will become better human beings, being human beings of great potential. This is what we want everyone to become. And we're gonna need as many as we can for what's coming. Sure. When was, where was the last um, trauma location that you visited? Um, some of the last trauma locations that I visited were, um, so the last expedition that I did was in Greece. Mm. And there was some big wars that happened in yeah. Greece. Yeah. It's, it's now this beautiful touristic vacation location that everyone likes to go to. Mm-hmm. But in the fabric, if you look deep enough beyond the layers, there is like incredible things that happened where you know tens of thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people clashed against each other mm-hmm. and like roman wars you know byzantine wars uh, ottoman wars like all of these things are in the fabric so i would go to a lot of these places including the places of the ancient gods mm-hmm. right like mount olympus sure. the uh so the oracle of delphi mm. like having actually a channeling with the last oracle that lived it was just that's epic, yeah. epic. Yes. epic. That is epic. epic. Wow. going to the birthplace of apollo and artemis mm. uh, which is the delos island oh wow it's called it's it's an island where gods are born so humans were not allowed to give birth on that island mm. it was full of temples mm-hmm. it's just this mind blowing you know thing that i wouldn't know if i wouldn't be guided to go to these places sure, mm-hmm. sure. on our next expedition will be to bosnia Serbia, croatia so the balkans are like the next step of really doing clearing and activations when when is that happening that's going to be in june okay and can people follow you online as you are doing some of that work there or so how is that going to work there is there is a there's a small portion that we share online okay. but what happens is we are we're basically shooting everything in 4k with drones and like wow. really high quality production sure. and then we're going to create episodes that we're going to release as sacred earth episodes people can follow mm-hmm. alongside with meditations and guidance for them to to, to experience that. okay beautiful and what is your website a seal so i can put it yeah in here. so it's it's very simple a seal.to and you'll land on our website and we are going through a rebranding. So mm-hmm. that will change probably like in a week or two. And if you are interested in my most recent uh, channeling that I did here at CLE with a special offer and a special meditation, it's CLTO slash CLE. Great. And if you, you can... sign up there, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know about the next things that I have. And you do weekly transmissions as well of the Elohim or regular transmissions? We definitely have monthly transmissions uh, with the Elohim. Mm-hmm. And, and then we have a whole a membership program and courses that are coming up. So there's a lot there that uh, people can already do. Wonderful. So that's exciting. And we're going to have a seal back again. With Scott for the Absolutely. World. Okay. Yes. Love uh, to have you back. And Thank I just you. love what we're talking about with the planetary healing because the field does so much of that work, you know, this grid work. And then Charlie, you've also been doing this grid work yeah. around the United States and the homeless encampments and all of these locations as well. Do you right. want to just talk about what the importance is of this grid work? Well, yeah, well, it's important well, to know that we're each kind of have our own grid that we're working on, right? Like we are each our own earth in an essence, right? So we can't just depend on some, oh, somebody else already did that light work. Right. So that's already done. It doesn't work like that. So a lot of us now you'll find, especially the people that are awakening the last few years are being moved around like, uh, like on a chessboard oh, by our by our higher are. selves like and so like this good work whether you know it or not is being done by your higher self but now it's beginning to come down into the 
of a conscious awareness where you can really be aware of what's mm -hmm. happening and you can mm -hmm. really feel it. And the more you say yes, you know, your higher self is asking you that question in your nighttime soldier, and you keep saying yes, you get empowered to do this work. Mm -hmm. All right. And a lot of, I know on the West Coast, there's been a lot of work on the, you know, on the San Andreas Fall, you know, working with the elementals, Guy has been having us having me especially, but to project that out there to, she's like, I'm rising, you know, ready or not. That's you know, right. Ready or, happening. Re yeah, ready or not, if you guys don't want to do this, my elementals yeah. will, you know, so, so it's like, you know, when things pop up, it's to know that you actually have the gifts and you are empowered to, to diminish big hurricanes that are forming in the ocean and, you know, with good meditation. And these are the things I can tell like a zeal and people are bringing back to the thing. And it, and all you need to do is experience it one time and, Pray to uh, what on your Doppler radar, you see a storm forming. You just pray for those elementals, pray, empower the elementals to diminish so that they don't need to do all the work. And you'll watch things magic happen almost, right? And it's like, and it's uh, it's powerful. Right now, we're going in. This is the 2023. The way the angels speak to me is this is a, a year of purity. All right. They say the goddess of purity is like the, the elected master over the earth right now, this year. And this is going to be a lot of forgiveness you know for the last 20 years here we are at conscious life expo where the truth tellers really became prominent the whistleblowers and things mm -hmm. but we're going into an age where gaia is saying like but that first wave that got the impulse to see the truth now is needs is required to move into forgiveness and love and not to condone anything that comes up in the shadows but we need to move past and then she's going to give the impulse to the next wave like Azia was talking about and this is where like now hundreds of millions of people are going to start seeing it and they need us to show them how did we get over the judgments and things like this for the shadows that we created ourselves all right and now it's um this is the phase that we're at it's going to be a big year next two or three years is going to oh, be like yeah. oh man you know, it's going to be it's going to be something it's so building up it is it's strong. strong right yeah. because daniel Brinkley is in the house yeah. 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 thank you all thank you so much thank you guys. And thank you for oh, yes. having yes. all of that. Still, you're amazing. Yeah. And Scott, and people, I was going to be here for today's forum. And for all of you, just feel free to join us again on soulsearch.io. You can always stay connected with us on there. And so beautiful seeing all of you guys. And Charlie is also opening a group on Soul Search called. I'm awakening to the call. So we'll continue these discussions together. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tangina. Um, let's do an angel show with them. Absolutely. You got it. And hey, everybody. I'm coming back. <laughs> we're right there. We're bringing up Daniel. Uh, Daniel, when you and your friends are ready, but I'll, I'll take your time. Wow. Isn't this fun? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm going to bring up Omashar for a second. I have not been able to um, see you um, in the chat, I know. See the chat. So catch me up. What do I need to know? Nothing, really. Um, there there was a, uh, a wondering if uh, Twin Ray were going to turn up today. Ah, here's what's happening with the Twin Ray. I've actually spent a lot of time with them this weekend. Um, they were going to be on the show, but then they had people request um, a time to go into healing. So they added to their already amazing agenda, exactly the time of our show, doing a healing circle. So they are right now doing a healing circle, sending energy up. I'm gonna do an interview with them later this afternoon, which I will play on a future show. Um, but I'm wearing, they gave me a Twin Ray t-shirt um, and they gave me one for Jasmine Bear. I had 45 minutes just with the Twin Ray yesterday. And I will share some of the amazing wisdom that they imparted. Um, but you know, since we've got Daniel with us and we've still got um Isaac Mars is here, and Daniel's got a whole story. Come on up, Daniel, bring your friends. Um, and we've got Isaac Mars still. Daniel, have a seat, bring up your friends. Oh, I want to sit here. You want to sit well? It's okay. you about right. All right. so let's see. Yeah. So let's now do we want to put your friends up in the foreground? I want to put them in front of them. Okay, all right. So uh, we'll bring that in and then we should have Isaac Mars. And then I need you. Okay, I'm right here. Okay, you can, is Michelle going to be here? All right, she's, yeah, no, you're sitting here. I'm sitting here. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my oldest friends, Daniel Brinkley, we first worked out as a producer on a show called The Other Side, a daytime talk show, NBC, and Daniel was one of our 
star guests. Omoshar, we'll be back to you a little bit later on in the show. Um, he, when I think of the whole of Expo, I think of Damien Braithwaite. You have been the keynote, the main attraction. And there's been different, there was the whole life expo and there's the new living expo and this is the conscious life expo. It's basically our tribe coming together. And um, Daniel has really been like the, such a big part of the draw for so many years. But then he was telling me that 75% uh, of the people that are here and it's the largest attended expo ever. And he was telling me 75% of the people here are newbies. Brand new never been before, the largest one in years. I have uh, been through this with uh, Quicksilver from when he had to get three mortgages on his house and he had to float those mortgages so no one called him to put these shows on and to watch the success in the 20th year of him doing this and to seeing the new people that are coming in and being involved in it and looking at the cross session, it just makes me really, really proud, Scott. And we are old friends, you know, you and I are old friends. And when you reached out to me about uh, reaching out to the tribe during the pandemic, it would be something naturally that you would do. Mm -hmm. It's just who you are. And, and you know all the mind reading, raising the dead stories. You filmed all that stuff. You know me, mind psychic, mind reading, crazy. So now real quickly, I just got to remind you, now you've, you all saw Robert Quicksilver's son, who's co-producing the festival. He was on The Awakening World last year, last week, Sahaj. But with Daniel, he does, he's had multiple near-death experiences and came back with gifts. And I've watched him take people who are terrified to die, afraid, believing there was no life after death. Daniel, I've watched him hug and hug lasts a long time. And he takes people up and shows them, I like to call it the astral plane, it's more commonly known as heaven, shows them oh, the, the multidimensional bit itself. Yeah. One of the parts of heaven, once you're, once you psychologically and in reality free yourself from the physical dimension, changes your perspective. Okay, and depends on where that person is and how much energy I have, I can pull them into that realm because I know it so well. So what was so fun today is when you saw it last night, I was going to be here. I have loved being a part of these expos and with TC Daniel, why? Well, why? Because this. I have recruited hospice volunteers and brought people to hospice in palliative and end of life care from these shows. And I built the Twilight Brigade out of the show, sure. all these shows. All shows were done, yeah. I have done, recruited thousands of people into caregiving and hospice in VAs and affected millions of people in about palliative and end of life care and about the divine nature of who we are as great powerful and mighty spiritual beings with dignity, direction, and purpose. And I will argue those points against anybody, anywhere, anytime. And again, we are you, every one of us is this to exist in this plane at this time to be here at this time, you are a great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being. Those are attributes that you've attained. You are a spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose. And you would not have gotten here at the birth of an age if that wasn't the factors by which you came. You are the best of the best. So... In reality, in the deepest nature of the spiritual world, there was only one thing that can go wrong with a spiritual being. It allows something to affect its dignity, which skews its direction and its purpose. Well, what Scott tried to do with the peace group is to give in the pandemic everybody a place to hold on to that, <clears throat> that loving point of view of sitting in our living room, talking it over, and being a part of it in the music and the poetry. So, uh, in the course of an event, Michelle was stuck back in that corner. She's an expert in branding and creating ways, and she's really, she's clinically minded, but she's spirit drawn spiritually to things that happen in reality. And so, thank you, Michelle. Yeah. We all need a Michelle. Exactly. We and need so, a lot of Michelles. And so I came across Chris. So the story was this, 
this is funny because it's easy for you to get it, Scott. But his partner in working with herbs because he's Ayurvedic medicine mm -hmm. and he's an energetic healer. He just hasn't realized it. Okay. And his partner stopped the other day and said, and came and said, uh, Ashley said, she said, Chris, your father's trying to communicate with you. Father's trying to communicate with you and you need to do something about it. And he said that to Michelle, who I've known her since she was born, said to Michelle, and Michelle said, well, you need to talk to daddy. <laughs> okay. I think I see where this is going. All right. So the point that was the PowerPoint was it was about forgiveness. Okay. Everybody has reasons for why they forgive. And it's in three categories. If you forgive somebody, it sets up a system of rules for you to be judged or to judge yourself. And which one of those you choose as the reason determines so many things that affect your daily life. Okay. So when, when he, when we sat down this morning, and I'll do this fast because I want to see Dale, but when we sat down this morning, uh, he, uh, uh, Michelle had told me, and I said, okay, let's see. And Forgiveness is easy to read in the record because it's categorized in three reasons. And the reason why Ashley told him that was forgiveness was important in who she is in his everyday life of helping him understand the medicine, helping him heal through life's traumas and the stuff that everybody goes to, and then to realize finding a way to be a healer. Okay, so we have forgiveness and healing. So I just listened to the sound of his voice and I went to the record and I read the record and I said, okay, this is what it's about. Okay. And then now, before I, I like to get Chris to interact with you being the interviewer of that story and do it fast. Well, Chris, I've noticed an emotional response going on for you. And I heard Daniel say something about your father. So have you had an experience with Daniel supporting you of forgiveness around your father? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the backstory is my father died, you know, a few months ago. And so uh, when he passed away, I felt there was like unfinished business that was never dealt with. And so I just felt like I need to communicate with my father somehow and see what's going on. And so by chance of Michelle and, and Daniel, it, it happened. And he was able to tell me, um, what was going on and you know i was ready for forgiveness and told me another story that needed to be done to move forward and, and extend and learn um create healing for everyone else around me and my family and help others too so it was really and and free. yeah how's your heart feeling I, it feels very calm now the stress is gone you i have the answer now so i'm at rest i'm calm now so it's really good to have that so Daniel kind of went into the record spoke to what took place with you and your dad and then was there an actually an experience of you feeling the spirit of his father? No. No. no but, just reading the record. Everything's in the record. No. He was an asshole. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest Don't part come is, in for it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no. No. The funniest part is that he's totally right. And so when he said what he said, as we were talking earlier, I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, you hit it right on the button. You know, we all have different relationships with our parents. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it could be a good relationship or a bad relationship. Relationship. I love my dad. Not necessarily I didn't like him too much, what he was about. But hey, he took care of me. He raised me. You know, and Danny told me what it was about. I said, you know what? You're totally right. You know, let me go around. It's in, it's in the record. Yeah. Okay. But remember, the power that we're listening to is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. The power is forgiveness and understanding the rules in this existence about how this forgiveness works. And how it measures you, it can be measured by you, okay? And so the way that this happens is this. Whatever field he's in, which is always my measure of everything, it has to do with health care. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never moved. Battle for the souls of humankind will be fought in health care. Okay, never said anything but that for 47 years, all right? So I'd like to introduce, uh, I'd like to introduce Chris and who he is to the tribe. Because yes. it's zoomable. Absolutely. And I'd like you to know a little bit about him, a little bit about him, 
so that if it connects with you energetically, that another methodology from the tribe becomes accessible to we who are healing ourselves on many levels. So beautiful. So welcome. This is the Global Peace Tribe. Thank We've you. done 500 shows so much. since the start of the pandemic. And these are mostly healers. They're the people that would be at the Conscious Life Expo, but weren't able to make it to the Great. Conscious Life Expo. Great. And I love every one of them. Yeah. So I, you know, my story is a uh, conventional medicine failed me. I was given two options in my lifetime, which was surgery and medication. And I was a victim of someone with a, a situation of surgery that was promised to work the rest of my life. And what happened was it, it was caused me devastation. In my 30s, I cried because the doctor was like, you know, this didn't work. And I was like, you told me it was going to work. So I figured, okay, I noticed that when we see doctors, we're embedded in our mind that they know every answer. Right. We, we consider them the ultimate doctors. authority figure. Yeah, ultimate authority. So what they say is good. I was raised like that. And to go against what he said at that time, I was so scared to even, even branch out and say, oh my God, let me try another alternative. And that's when I got into meditation. And that's when I got in, I'm going to figure this out. And that's when I got into alternative medicine, integrative medicine. And I'm going back to school and I ended up starting Ayurveda and functional medicine. And, um, and I've learned the body can heal through proper digestion, proper food, proper herbs, and supplementation. Proper prayer. Yeah, and there's three bodies, the spirit body, the mental body, and the physical body. If we learn to line all three, we can completely heal the body. And so um, I went on this branch, and this, and I ended up just loving everything about it. And uh, So I ended up studying Ayurveda, and I'm going to complete my doctorate in the next few years in uh, natural medicine, and I, and I love it. And there's every herb for every ailment in the body, and it's very exciting. So uh, I, for one, know that I can heal my hip. I actually, people know I had a hip injury. Um, and when I was told I was not going to be able to run again, do all these things again, I was like, I'm not going to take that answer. I was like, there's no way. So <clears throat> getting in this field, I've met so many great people. And it's opened up the door to different modalities, different types of healing, spiritual healing, going in your past lives, learning about generational trauma. And so um, I've been on this path to heal, and it's been amazing. And so I decided to form my own practice. It's called Advanced Veda. Um, and I work with another great doctor. Do you have a website? Uh, yeah, it's advancedveda.com. In the second, let me put it yeah, in the, this, this is, this is the skill set. Oh, sorry, Scott. What is it? Advancedveda.com. Veda? Yeah, V E D A V E D A dot com. Okay. Uh, it's not up yet, you guys. It's under construction, oh. but it's okay. I work with another great doctor, uh, Dr. Madhavi. She's amazing. She's a yoga teacher, a chiropractic, and a functional medicine doctor. We work together, come up with the greatest plan for people, help them heal. Um, and so I'm still on my healing mission, mission myself. My goal is to help others heal. Because um, remember, conventional medicine, when you see a doctor, most of the time they're going to give you two options, surgery and medication. There's a billion other options out there, and everyone can heal. And so um, I want to spread that and help everybody else out with pain, whatever it may be, digestion, whatever it is, help people heal. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to go to Daniel's, the website that we want to make sure everybody knows about, which is Daniel's, and it's lightstreamers.com. There it is. See, it shows right up. Yeah, Mr. Mather. All right. So here we go. To learn more about the amazing work that Daniel's doing, um, you go to lightstreamers.com. I'm going to click where it says, take me to Daniel. And that's where you can learn all about Daniel. And again, if you don't know, uh, there's so many parts of Daniel's life. There's the books that he's written, best-selling book. They made a movie out of his life called Saved by the Light. I'm now a Turner movie classic. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Did they color? They didn't have to colorize you. Though. Well, color, probably. Color, you know, yeah. it's that old. <laughs> you can learn all about Daniel, but you know, the most important thing is his hospice work. And his hospice work is so beautiful. Um, you've worked with, personally, with over 30,000 people now? No, uh, I've been with 2,013 people going from, from this world to the next and 353 when they were taking their last breath. And I have more than $34,000 at the bedside. That's what we've seen, Alex, 34,000. Imagine that, you guys, 34,000 hours, 300 plus people as they took their last breath. 
and been dead so many times, it's like a comedy routine. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're still with us. And everybody, I think that what the joy is, is honoring uh, Scott. That I ask each of you today, because Ayurvedic medicine and these energetic fields of endeavor, because when you take a look at the construction of the last medicine that we just got and how it's constructed, not all, all the conspiracy theories, but all that, but how is it constructed? Then you see that you're moving into an energetic world, uh, electrical world and energetic world, as opposed to a chemical world, mm -hmm. chemistry. How does this type of chem RNA show you the electrical components of your reality. And right there is going to be the transition into medicine, into energetic medicines. And we live at the precipice of this right now. So I want to thank everybody, but I'm more important. I want to thank Scott because he's been one of the really true, wonderful uh, friends to this movement, to this cause. And I think I've had more fun being around Scott than I've had being around most people. <laughs> we have a good time. We have a good time. You know, Daniel, what you just said is the perfect lead into our next guest. Absolutely. Because Daniel represents, you know, and listen, we're both older. And so we're kind of old guard. We've been doing this a long time, but there's the next generation of luminaries. And as you talk about moving into electrical being, this is Isaac Mars. Do you mind if I uh, post Isaac here? Sure. Isaac. And I'm going to stay here. Yeah, stay for a minute because I want you to. Hear the genius of his stuff now. Um, you know, and you both have had, I mean, you've had multiple near death experiences. Isaac had a, a fascinating, different kind of a near death experience. So I mean, this is Isaac about Mars. A different kind of near death. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I, the same way as that. Well, so. you're going to you're gonna hear it. Isaac, tell your story. So, well, thank you, everybody, for having me. Primarily here in Daniel Bolas. Yes, yes. So thank you everybody for being here and being a part of this gathering of the Global Peace Tribe. And thank you, Scott, for doing what you're doing because what we're doing together is we are fulfilling the prophecies. We are the prophesied ones. And in my experience, after I got the download for Unity Theory, my book, which you can find at thecrimsoneagle.com uh, for free or love donation. When I got that download, I realized, oh my gosh, we are all one. We are unified with the universe around us. And for those of you who don't know what pantheism, I'm a pantheist. So I believe that the universe and God are the same thing. Pagan. <laughs> and uh, it's pagan, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what I did is I, after my awakening to this information, I decided to set out to find the one person I thought I could use this these physics to change the world in the greatest capacity possible. And now I learned a lot more, but the person I went to was Elon Musk. And I drove over a thousand miles from Michigan, where I grew up, to Tesla, Giga Texas, and Austin. And I tried every phone number, every email, and everything was blocking me. I couldn't get through to anybody, no response. So I showed up at the front gate and I start explaining the situation. The security guards, they're all calm, everything's good. They're like, okay, well, do you have, a, do you have an appointment? And I said, no, I, I just need to get in contact with somebody because I can't get through. And they asked me for my name. And I said, Isaac Moss. And they go, you need to leave right now. And when they said that, the energy completely shifted. And I was so curious as to why. And immediately they had the, the police arrive because I decided, you know, negative attention was better than no attention. And I ended up in jail for this. And in that experience in jail, I was given a tuberculosis test. Well, I was a medic in the army for almost seven years, and I had been trained on giving tuberculosis tests, and you check it within 15 to 30 minutes because mm -hmm. it's one of the most contagious diseases known to mankind. But when I asked why the nurse didn't come back after it was administered, the guard told me, oh, no, they checked that in two to three days. Two to three days to let one of the most contagious diseases known to mankind to spread around in the jail? That doesn't make any Especially sense. Especially being an army veteran. Exactly. So- uh, after that happened, I noticed that my blood, uh, my blood pressure uh, decreased and my vaso or my, um, my blood vessels vasodilated. They opened up, my uh, heart rate increased to over 120 beats per minute, and I felt my heart contracting, the contractility beat harder. 
And it was as if they were trying to force this poison through my my blood. And then the the how? I mean, what mechanism do you think that you think they were using the zero field to energetically align that poison you said they're trying to force through your energy? Who 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 is doing that? So it it was from the injection. I don't know if there was any from the TB test. Yes, yes, it was underneath. You're supposed the to TB. Well, wait, 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 you stay with it. I'll yeah, get yeah. it. I'll get it. So um, you don't fool me, Scott. <laughs> right, but this was a very slow acting poison, and that's what happens if you give a subdermal in injection. It takes a while for your body to absorb it. And every time I ate the food there, it felt like my stomach was going to rupture and explode. In jail. In jail. And I started to realize that I had a pulsating mass in my abdomen. And for anybody in the medical field, that is a hallmark sign of what's known as a triple A. Absolutely. An abdominal aortic aneurysm. And I had all the training on this. So all I could do is, you know, cry and say, faith unto death faith unto death, stopped eating the poisonous food they were giving me, started fasting. And about the fourth day of fasting, I felt suddenly after chanting faith unto death over and over again, this huge wave of healing energy come over me. And I opened the Bible, which was in my cell to a random page. And it said, um, you will be uh, tested by the poison of an adder, which is a snake. And um, a few days went by still, and I was fasting and the uh, physician asked me about my theory, uh, and and she said she was checking my mental health. But literally, I this just, is the physician in the in the jail. In the jail, yes. And when I talked to her, she had almost no emotion. It was like a robotic uh, person, basically. And all she was asking me about was my theory, and she made it pretty clear she understood it, she could comprehend it. And then she asked what I was going to do. And I said, well, if I can't get in contact with Mr. Musk, then I'm going to release this to the world for free. And she said, all right, we're done here. And then they took me for an EKG, electrocardiogram, to check my heart rate. And for some reason, I was, I was shivering. And the nurse lies to my face when I tell her, you know, nurse, this isn't going to work. Every time I'm moving my muscles, there's going to be uh, feedback on the waveform. She lies to my face. She says, no, it's a perfect read. Folds it in half and walks out. So in my interpretation, with everything that I propose in unity theory, what was happening is they were attempting any which way to get me into a low vibration, to get me to be so afraid that I would manifest my own death. But I kept saying, faith unto death, faith unto death. And then uh, around the ninth day I was in there, I opened still up- Still fasting? Still fasting. Uh, I think it was eight days total while I was in there. And I opened up the Bible to a random page, put my finger down. It's Revelation 2, verse 10. It says, behold, do not be afraid, for the devil is about to throw you into prison, and for 10 days you will have trial and tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and you will have the crown of life. I'm sorry, I missed that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and, I need a TV test. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Elon Musk next week. Yeah. <laughs> so on the 10th day, I was released. All charges dropped, no explanation. And from that point forward, I started following the path of least resistance, learning and integrating more about the 12 universal laws or the seven hermetic principles. And ever since then, it's been door opening after another. And this leads me into something that I really want to share with the Peace Tribe today. That was part of my talk yesterday. And this has to do with sovereignty, sovereignty on the individual level and on the spiritual level. For those of you that don't know about this, there is something called the sesta KV Act. This act dates to an interesting year, 1666, in which there was a displacement due to a pandemic in Europe. And what this act was, was um, at that time, Pope and the Vatican declared dominion over the world. All nations didn't say anything about it. So in that sense, for universal law, silence was acceptance. And then they put out this law, the Sesta KB Act, that said, if you don't report to the authorities that you are a living being, you are considered dead and or lost at sea. And this was the creation of the birth certificate system. Maritime law. Yeah, this is the implementation of maritime law. The creation into, of corporations. Exactly. Corporations, the root word of corp, or corporations is corpse. So when we understand birth that. birth is where you put a boat. Exactly. You birth, a, when you dock a boat, you birth. Right. So the, the big takeaway, because I don't want to take up, up too much time, is that when we realize this, we realize that there's something called the SESTA KV Trust. And anybody who has their birth certificate name or whatever the system is in your nation, if you're 
global, it's going to be a part of the SESTA KV Act. It just might be a little variation. But anybody who has their all capital name, because they treat us like capital, and all caps is what they use on all cemetery gravestones and tombstones. Because you are a corporation. Exactly. They have corporatized our identity. But in order to have this limiting experience here on earth, we agreed to that on the spiritual level. But here's the caveat. When they are using our name in that trust, they are making millions to billions of dollars off of us every year. And where is that money coming from, Scott? It's coming from your life force. Your value. It's coming from your energy field. So essentially, what I'm saying is for us to ascend, we have to revoke our name out of the SESTA KV Trust because it's like trying to heat oh, up no, a no, room. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. We accepted the so-called evil. Yes. We accepted the shot to give the Antichrist to the two or three that came when we came. Yeah. And we knew it would be in a system we could identify mentally, physically, spiritually, but mostly politically as the position. Correct. When they're using the value of our spiritual energy, energy to wage fucking war, yeah. to set off a nuclear war, which is now the conversation that's going on in our world today. Well, I'm, I'm not going to let that happen. Well, wait a second. <laughs> this is why I'm honoring you. This is me and Scott. We're old timers. Yeah. yeah. But this is great seeing the two of you. This, I'm loving this. I love it. I love it. No, but we're old timers, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. I've been fighting them suckers. You know what? Yeah. I'm just a little early. I got here a little early. Thank you. you for holding that down for yeah, me. And remember, faith or to divine intervention, yeah. nobody dies. The whole concept of somebody dying is the craziest thought anybody <laughs> high in the world. Agreed. Can you kill or a spiritual being die? Give me some kind of definition. If you're going to die and I'm going to go to hell, well, if I'm dead, who gives a crap if I'm going to hell? Right. And if I'm dead, who gives a crap if I'm going to heaven? But if you don't die, then that becomes an interesting prospect. But listen to me. I want to honor you. I want you to do it from this point. Okay. You're a corpsman in the army. And you just went through, I know what TB does in the military, and I know how fast the test goes and how you. Then that's the divine giving you direction as a healer. Because sovereignty comes in how well you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Louder, a little bit louder, people are asking to speak louder. Well, um, sovereignty comes in how well you take care of yourself. Yeah. And I would take the quantum nature and the physics understanding of who you are, and I would focus it on the healer. Mm -hmm. Because you have that power, just like Chris. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand how the divine works based on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So I would structure forgiveness of all the people who created a way to try to lower your vibration to control your energy. We in this battle know this point. If you can set up a system that weakens the immune system, like what AIDS does, autoimmune, you set up a weakness. The physical body has to stay at a certain harmonic vibration in order for we, mm -hmm. the spiritual being, to stay attached to it. Right. Everybody wants to be us. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be them. That's why they're all around here. And <laughs> interdimensional extraterrestrial. Right. Everybody wants to be us. Yeah. So if a spiritual being cannot stay equal to that vibration, which is determined by healthcare and attitude mm -hmm. toward how you see yourself in relationship to everybody else. Mm -hmm. so what they're trying to do, and you were absolutely correct, the food that you eat has the estrogen in it. It has the system in it. Mm -hmm. It is designed to kill you, make you fat, cause uh, pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it has human parts in it. Kraft put out a list of all the human stuff they have, you know, the yeah. mayonnaise and all of that. So I would stay in it as a sovereign being. I would focus on being a, a healer. Absolutely. And, but that's part of what I'm trying to share here. Okay, so, that, I just, so hear me out a little bit. Okay? I got you, baby. So uh, what I'm saying is essentially, if we are allowing these corporations, these dead entities to feed off of our life force, we are leaking our energy. And that is something that we agreed to, to have this human experience. But in this age of Aquarius, now it's time for us to say enough is enough. And the reason why is because they're using that life force to wage war. Exactly. To set up, we are contributing to killing ourselves. Right. In nuclear exchange for 2023, mm -hmm. to have what's going on, to have what's going on 
in the Ukraine mm -hmm. and that to be happening mm -hmm. and the world has not put its foot down. Right. You sit down and you talk it through. That's right. insane. So, but, but this is how we are going to put up that stand and say enough is enough. We are putting our foot down because when we are leaking our energy to all these corporations, it's like having a room that has a whole bunch of windows and doors and you're trying to heat the room up to 75 degrees so it's nice and toasty, but it's below freezing outside and you have all the windows open and you think that room's going to heat up to 75? No. Depends on gonna... whether I was there. <laughs> right, right. So that that is true, though. There are these powerful beings such as yourself, such as you, Scott, and, and me included. I see you in the way I see myself for all divine gods and beings on this planet. But the thing is, uh, for those of us who are really indoctrinated, the, the thing about Bruce Lipton science and Greg Braden science is that they have shown that we, in order to shift our subconscious mind, the 90% of the power that we're creating from is the only way to do that is through repetition. So what I'm proposing is instead of constant repetition over and over every day, waiting and waiting until the perceived linear time passes enough to where we finally have that sovereignty without doing a simple piece of paperwork, to me, that is a waste of my energy. So what I'm doing and what my mentor, full colon, Robert, hyphen, Joseph, full colon, Driscoll, period, that's his quantum syntax name, which many of you are going to be learning about probably after this. When we uh, take our name out of the SESTA-KV trust, we become part of the unity states of the world. This is a UN recognized nation that is completely covered up. That was created by the name or by the man, David Wynn Miller. And he uses the same type of quantum syntax name. He created it. He, he two other people. Exactly. And so- in this what? system, you know about that? I know every detail. Mm. Wow, powerful being. Yeah, I mean, I love that you two spontaneously showed up. No, no, spontaneously. <laughs> it's called Godspeed. Yeah, it's, it's it started based, the same as it was based on forgiveness. All of this, Scott, started because of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Okay, which I was going to be on time. You know, I do what I say. I'm you do, do, you do. Okay, but it, forgiveness was the issue, and that's a power. Okay, and it's measured in three ways. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pull you as a healer. I'm trying to pull you as a healer because they would not have gone after your theory of unifying. You unify people mm -hmm. based on what? Always remember the energy that they're stealing from you is contributing to killing us all yeah. as we are waging a war in the Ukraine. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the battle for the souls of humankind will be fought in healthcare. All right, so all I'm doing mm -hmm. is adding old wisdom to your perspective because sovereignty is this. Sovereignty is I am a great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose. And I chose to be here, but I was chosen to be here. And the fact that I was chosen to be here is more important to me than all the other reasons I'm in here doing this. Yeah. I agreed to allow the Antichrist to come play his best hand mm -hmm. with the same system they set up, the same thing that you're describing. It's the book of Revelations and all that, but it's still like a hundred other prophecies. It's not to Thomas. And yeah, but they're all in alignment with each other. I wrote a book That's 30 easy. years ago. I wrote a book 30 years ago and I laugh at people. It was based on the notebooks that I had written in 1977 after the first near death experience, where it was, it was a death experience. I wrote down these boxes of knowledge, these visions. Well, anybody can go buy a 30-year-old book mm -hmm. and they go to chapter five, chapter five, and read the 12 boxes, which were at the end of the cycle. Mm -hmm. And tell me what I missed. Mm -hmm. Tell me of the 140 there, how, what I missed. Okay. Even down to describing the 12th box is called technology and the virus. Mm -hmm. And I describe in detail from 1976 all of this. Mm. So I'm asking you again. Yes. As you declare independence in a system that's physics, mm -hmm. has to do with touching, mm -hmm. has to do with manifesting. Right. And the identity of the collapse, if you create this for people to show them a way, mm -hmm. but it's just them observing that, it's not your calling. Mm. Calling is toward healing, mm -hmm. a corpsman for seven years. Mm -hmm. That is power. Okay, when I was in the game, 
two people I made sure I knew where they were, the radio man and the coroner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I kept my eyes on them mm -hmm. everywhere I ever was. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sense of trust among veterans, mm -hmm. and you have in there, that's your power of conversion, mm -hmm. more so than the correct straight structure of knowing that the most powerful place in America mm -hmm. is the post office in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. That's the most powerful place in America. And the flag that flies above it mm -hmm. in the system of sovereignty that you described. So I'm not trying to, to change you. No, no, no. I'm just trying to be an old man that says, hey, look, if it was about physics, go for it. Well, but it's about healing. No, absolutely. But here's here's where I want to honor your beautiful reflection and show you that we're actually on the same page. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the same thing because it is the physics and the healing that are one. It's the science and the spirituality that are one. And this is reported through Bruce Lipton's epigenetics. This is reported through- uh, Oh, just old friends. I, right. I know all those- Right. So it's an issue within our field, within our energy that manifests on the physical as these other symptoms of illness or disease. So for me to be in my healer power is to speak about the physics of how to heal thyself. Because nobody's- How to be sovereign first. Exactly. Nobody's here to rescue you. Nobody's here to save. Wait a minute. From your own I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's here to save any of us from our own lessons, because to me, that wouldn't even be a true savior. So this is about teaching people and sharing the knowledge right. about how we can step into our full potential by learning things like hollow dynamics from Dr. Victor Vernon Wolf, learning things about unity theory on my website, learning things about how this powerful brother is bringing his healing energy to the world just by being his true authentic and self. And Scott. And Scott. All and, Chris, all of and all of you and watching actually. back there. <laughs> all of you out there, by being your true self, you are tipping the scale toward the light. And the more that we tip it towards the light, the more fearful those that have chosen the dark become. And it's an exponential shift. And that's where we are today. That's where we are that's not a, now. That's not a future event, everybody. Exactly. That's this Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. That's this Sunday afternoon. I've been saying all weekend, we've been on the 99th monkey. There, this is the 100th monkey. monkey. We're, it's, it. it's done. This is it. We have won. This is it. Now it's all about riding the wave. We are almost at 12 noon. And I had promised some light touch and I had promised some music with Bill Mershar. Um, and, and what an amazing conversation, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are even wearing the same color. Yeah. Well, you need that energetic pattern. His is a little brighter. And this is a little brighter. He's younger. 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 He's younger. We're a little bit more, you know, we got a little more gray, a little bit more. What we're just old as hell. <laughs> and, when, and listen, and when Mr. Day, hey everybody, I love you with all my heart. And I wish you were here. I wish you were here. And the fact that you can't be here, I am so thankful to Scott for keeping this alive for over 500 shows. And the two new people I get to meet because of forgiveness as a power. I, I'm thankful to the divine force and how it operates. And I'm thankful for each of you. Mm, Daniel, I love you so much. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. Michelle, thank you for what you're doing in the world. Chris, everybody sure, have a um, wonderful day. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm going to put my website in the chat real quick. Send me, send me um, get a hold of it. Daniel knows how to get a hold of it. Yeah. Everything that's yeah. about Scott. Yeah. Any health food bars in here? Um, so I just put my you need a health food bar? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, go ahead while I get him yeah, yeah. set up. So for those of you who want to learn more, um, know that I am not fully an expert on the sovereignty process. I am still learning, but my mentor is helping me and guiding me through that. And if any of you are interested, come out to Sedona or reach out to me through my website, through my email, through even social media, such as Facebook and Instagram, and we'll get you set up. We will take care of the live life claim process. And if anybody this wants to favorite. learn the physics of unity theory, Check out my website, thecrimsoneagle.com, and know that I am here for all of you. I am here to bring our brothers and sisters together, and I want you to know that you all are worthy of being the unconditional love that you truly are deep within your hearts. So thank you for all being here and sharing this beautiful moment. Thank you for being you, and I look forward to our celebration of our great family coming back together. Much love.
Um, go ahead and take over uh, for a moment more, Isaac. All right. I'm going to just share this beautiful hug for a second, though. Oh, I didn't realize you were acting great. Omashar, go ahead and take over for a moment, Omashar. <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> what a lovely scene. All these beautiful people dancing. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> kind of wish I was there. What an amazing conversation. It was wonderful seeing Daniel and Isaac kind of not sparring, but definitely sharing their, uh, their opinion with each other. I really like that. And I love what Isaac has to say, especially about sovereignty. It's really important. And here's our fearful leader now, Captain Scott. <laughs> this has been a very unique show. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying it. I'll look forward to reading what's in the chat. Pop in the chat if you enjoy a show like this. It's so spontaneous and not quite so directed with, yes, I'd love to know if you're enjoying uh, the style of Awakening World. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn over to, I'm going to bring Jay on because as we want to integrate all that we've been hearing, we can use light touch. And light touch is going to become a very big part of what we're doing together. We're going to actually start light touch practice groups uh, online. And of course, we'll be doing light touch together at the Global Peace Tribe Retreat, which is going to happen at the end of March. Um, so, Jay and your big hat, is Jan with us today? Let me see if I can find Jan. He's cooking uh, my breakfast, and I'm going to. Not missed my breakfast this morning. <laughs> okay, well, so, uh, you know what? Um, take care, Daniel. Love you much. You. We could um, just do a short invocation for everyone. So uh, get ready, everybody, to get out of feather or something soft. I'm sure I'll play a little bit of music. We're going to do a little light touching into the Here's the thing. That we are awakening. Only choose to see it. The awakening of you on earth. Awakening. Mm -hmm. We use light touch to pray for the dream. Light touch for each other. Maximum praise. As I see people doing light touch. Do prayers for yourselves, prayers for each other, and all of your blessings be blessed. Maximum prayers for anyone we know, suffering, maximum prayers for all of our animal family, dogs and cats, our ancestors, maximum prayers. All of those beings, we touch this up, we awake the senses. We remember how extreme that the being, spiritual beings, and the human experience. All these wonderful people to be light touch. Let's put this spotlight on each other for a minute. Be calling on the blessings of Friday, bringing in divine spirit. The prayer is to be in. Be through music, like Omashar demonstrates for us. So many different ways to pray with each other. Just holding each other. Your whole body and mind are just holding each other in prayer together. You'd be holding up a heart like George Noble, holding up just his heart. We love George. Yes, George, you're gone right now. What can I do? Love our beautiful global English. So when we come together, there's Jeffrey. Leads us in dance so often. 
Jeffrey. Never sure if that's okay. <laughs> we love you. We love all the members of this program. So may we continue every day. Because you can make any woman sacred blessing, whether it's the way you touch, and wonderful words we do, we're giving on them. Maximum grace. Maximum grace. Maximum grace for Reverend Jeffrey. Maximum grace for Kiki. Maximum grace for Bonnie and Roger. Maximum grace for Jan Kaplan. Maximum grace for Karen Eisenberg. Maximum grace for Dia. Maximum grace for Suzanne. Maximum grace for Lynn and Leaf. Maximum grace for those of you who don't have your cameras on. Maximum grace for Jay who turned off his camera to go eat his breakfast. Right here. <laughs> Maximum grace for us all as I go to gallery view. Maximum There's grace for you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. There's Jay. I couldn't find him. Maximum grace, everybody. So we are going to start light touch practice groups. I'll send out a survey this week to find out what times are best for everybody. And thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show. And I'm going to go to Omashar to close us uh, out. Excuse me here. Uh, yeah, I, I was sitting here the whole time waiting to do a little light touch with y'all. So I, I was in, my camera was on. <laughs> Uh, so I couldn't I couldn't find you for a moment there, Jay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to send a blessing to everyone here. And if we all send blessings to each other, it starts to become exponential. Do you want to spotlight me, Scott, there? You are spotlighted, Jay. You are spotlighted. I just see you. No, you're spotlighted. Trust me. You're spotlighted. Okay. Omar Shar, is he spotlighted? Uh, not right now. There. It's on speaker view, Jay, whoever's okay. speaking. Well, I was speaking. <laughs> so thank you all for, for being here. And it's really important. You know, light touch is an important thing because every time you do light touch, it's a prayer. You know, so if you go out, uh, if you pray, thank you for miracles for everyone watching, that's a prayer. And light touch is, is amplifying our prayers. So we, we ask that we can receive these great, beautiful blessings that everyone's offering to the spirit and for each other. And we ask to live our best lives now to be the best versions of ourself. And we thank you for healing and for miracle healing. We all, a little miracle every day could really make a big difference. So uh, thank you for blessing the awakening world that we can reach a larger global, we're already global, but, you know, keep growing, you know, with uh, divine light, love and service. So thank you for blessing everyone here. And we're gonna be bringing light touch to the world and daily practice. Anyone who wants to know more, just, uh, you know, keep, uh, you know, you stay in contact with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for bringing Light Touch. Thank you, Jan. Love you both. Looking forward to our daily Light Touch practice. It's going to start soon. Um, and we'll get we'll be getting out a survey to see what day is best for people. And thank you, everybody, for being spontaneous. I was away from my keyboard guiding guests. It was a unique show. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing people's comments, and I'll read those. And I do want us to continue to maybe continue doing the light touch, absorbing all that we saw today, absorbing the energy of the expo as beautiful Omashar closes us out with a song. We are rising, soaring, flying, living life so free. We are flowing, changing, growing,
Contemplating everything I knew Seems as though there's not much left that I would hold on to Contemplating what is pure and true Sun and moon and stars and light and earth and water too Open minds and open doors and loving friends Look at the one who's standing by you now Destiny is in our hands So leave the density behind We are rising, soaring, flying Living life so free And I love being here with you. <laughs> I love being with you too. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, what Thank a trip. You. What a beautiful, beautiful show. So real, so intimate. And we got to see Scott's hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to see my hotel room. And thank you, everybody, for following the flow, being spontaneous. Um, thank you, Jay, for your patience. Um, and I want to let people know next week, we've got another wonderful set of shows planned for you. Um, and uh, next Saturday night is going to be especially amazing. It's um, our kind of consistent collaboration with the Global Coherence Pulse, all about unleashing the power of the heart. And once again, Jennifer Hill and Teresa Collins will be co-hosting with me. We've got Mystical Joyride and Omashar doing music and some really incredible presenters. So make sure, and you know, we want to grow our Global Peace Tribe. So if you really like one of our shows, share it with your friends. And next week, next Saturday, will be a really good show to in, um, invite friends to. 
So I just want to really let you know about that. But we'll also be doing original shows on Wednesday and Sunday. And um, thank you so much. I'm sure your music really <laughs> makes all the difference. It really makes the, the show. I'm going to go to gallery review so we can all say good night. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Good Happy good Sunday. Afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Namaste.